Hey everybody and welcome back to Jay's Retro Reactions. Today we're going to be reacting to episode 3 of Buck Rogers. If anyone is interested in buying that box set, I've left some links below in the video description. If you use those links, it costs you nothing extra, but it helps support the channel at the same time. So if you are considering buying the box set, please do consider using it. I'm really looking forward actually to reacting again to Buck Rogers. I really enjoyed the first two episodes, which were movie length. I believe this one is about 45 minutes in length, give or take. It's called Vegas in Space, which is a great 70s cheesy title, so I'm sure it's going to be interesting whatever this episode involves. So, as usual, enough of me talking, and let's get on with the show. Ah, I should have had him. Okay, we're starting off with Buck in some sort of space fight for some reason. Well, hello there. Who's he fighting, the pirates? You've got one on your tail. Roger. Or maybe it's a simulator. It sounds like a similar, maybe, they're training. Squadron destroyed after two minutes and 17 seconds of battle. The computer control system is next to useless against these hatchet fighters. So who are these hatchet fighter guys? Are they the Draconians or the pirates of someone new? Draconians started arming themselves with these new fighters. I've never seen a ship that was so maneuverable and so fast. So they are Draconians. The Draconians have got these new fighters which the Earth computers can't handle. And Book is suggesting they switch to manual, but he didn't seem to do so good when he switched to manual right there, so I don't know. Listen, uh, you got any plans for tonight? <sighs> oh, as a matter of fact, no. It's too bad, I do. Haha! <laughs> Book is playing with Wilma a little bit there, making her jealous. Oh, Phil Okay, so they had video recorded messages in the future. Again, good prediction by the writers of the show. Still, are people like you who are thoughtful and kind. Thank you, Felina. Who is this girl? I recognize her from something. I'm gonna have to look that up. I definitely recognize her face. Was she in the Waltons or something like that? I want you to leave here now. Go to the shuttle station. An itinerary already paid for will be waiting for you. I definitely recognize him. That's Cesar Romero. Again, he was in a lot of westerns and stuff like that and always played a bad guy as well. I'm sorry. Who is Felina? It's bugging me. Was she in Little House on the Prairie? I definitely know her from somewhere. Help me out, guys. Let me know in the comments. Major Landis, Amos Armat. Your real expertise lies in extortion, smuggling. So this guy is organized crime. He's a mafioso of the future. As yet, we've been unable to prove anything. And rest assured, you never will. Unless I turn myself and all my records over to you. Well, that's kind of idiotic. He just told them he keeps records and all these crimes are recorded in these records. So surely all they have to do now is seize these records. Paulina Redding has been kidnapped. She's a digital programmer. He seems to care a lot about Felina. Is she his daughter or something more than that? A numerical code. Felina had no idea what she'd seen. So Felina saw something she wasn't supposed to have seen, which will ruin three quarters of his business if that secret gets out. So one of his competitors has kidnapped Felina to get his secret. <laughs> it's not very clever to keep something that could ruin three quarters of your operation in one line of code now, is it? And obviously security is terrible since one programmer can just go and see it. And Dr. Hewer, probably he would have a good deal to tell us about hatchet fighters. So she's thinking with a glowy brain, she, or an alphabet agency brain, she's going, you might be a criminal, but Dr. Hewer, come on, we can use this guy. He's gonna have him access to information and sources and he can help us in our intelligence work. It's a deal. So the deal is he has to go and find out what's so special about this new hatchet fighter the Draconians are using that Earth's computers can't deal with it in their fighter craft. Back. Why does Felina mean that much to him? As I said, daughter or something more special? Golf is a very special 20th century sport, woman. Required coordination. It's a book. After teaching the future about American football, is now teaching the future about golf, which seems to have been completely erased from the memory of humans in the last 500 years. Not that I care. I agree with Oscar Wilde on this. Golf, for me, is a perfect way to ruin a good walk. But that's just me. The only time I ever walked on a golf course was when I was 12, and I got knocked out by a golf ball, so it put me off it for life. You did tell me that you liked to play 10 and 11, didn't you? Well, actually, I believe you called it um, Blackjack. So they haven't forgotten about Blackjack in the future, which is good. I like Blackjack. I'm not too bad at it either. I usually win when I play. You remember Major Landers? Major Marla Landers? Oh, that Major Landers? Yeah. 
Is she an extra book? Is book getting around already to so many women in the future? You ain't there that long. No, I don't know, Wilma. I have to think about it. When do we leave? <laughs> so Wilma played in Buck's ego and said, you know that chick you like? Major Landers? She's gonna be on a mission, Buck. Are you interested now? Buck said he is. Hotels, casinos, showrooms, everything revolves around entertainment and gambling. Hence the name Vegas in Space, and I'm sure Buck is gonna have a struggle going on this mission with what sounds like to be a lot of fun. Hold up, Buck. Looks like Dr. Theopolis came through with the items we asked for. Hiya, Twiggy. Dr. Theo is fast becoming the Q of Buck Rogers, like Q and James Bond, with all the little gadgets. Detonating device. Hmm? Effective from a distance or less. And Buck is getting what's like a Batman's utility belt with all the little gadgets in it. I can see the influences other shows have had on this one. Tell me if you think I'm wrong, guys, but that's what I see. Traveling to orbiting city of moral depravity obviously agrees with you, Buck. Well, it's a thankless job. And I agree with Buck. I want to go to an orbiting city of moral depravity. I wish we had one now. We have plenty of cities of moral depravity on Earth, but an orbiting one sounds cool as hell. <laughs> moral depravity in a zero gravity environment. To me, that sounds like heaven. <laughs> Anyone else agree? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> oh, hello. Don't tell me this is another lady of interest for Buck and not only have we got Major Landers and Wilma, we're gonna have this chick as well. She is a beautiful pair of brown eyes. Don't you agree, lads? There's only one way out of this city. Mr. Velocity. My way. This guy, I remember this guy as well. He was always a bad guy in loads of stuff. He was in the A-team and all that sort of thing, always as a bad guy. He's definitely going for the classical Hammer Horror Satan look. The high collar, the goatee, the slick back hair. Very Vincent Price look. I tell you, Marla, I am the Blackjack. What a mongoose is to a cobra. So Buck reckons he's a bit of a card sharp with the old Blackjack, we'll see. Blackjack actually does take a bit of skill. There is luck involved, don't get me wrong, but it's similar to poker in that there's also a bit of skill involved, knowing when to twist, when not to twist, knowing, studying what the banker's moves are, etc. So it does take a good bit of skill. That's Carl Morphus. People like Velosi call him in when they want to extract things from people's minds. Great, he's a mind reader. I definitely wouldn't want that guy inside my head. Trust me. Now that's Felina. If we can't locate her by the time Carl Morphus gets there, you might as well go home. It's bugging me. Who is this actress who plays Felina? What was she in, lads? Please tell me. A nice sinister slow walk in by Mr. Vincent Price. Look alike. Not in the face, but just in the style. Why am I here? You're here because you saw a digital code you weren't supposed to see. And actually, again, quite forward thinking by the writers of this show because Felina's job was a digital programmer, which is a common job nowadays, so fair play to them. <laughs> Calm down, Felina. This guy is just making you lose your mind just by looking at you, all sinister dressed like Vincent Price. I get it, but calm down, girl. A bit of an overreaction. You are now subject to the laws of Sinaloa. If you have any questions... Is Vegas in space? Did I just hear that announcer call it Sinaloa? As in, like, Sinaloa in Mexico, famous for the drug cartels that Narcos did a whole series on. Really? I'm sure that's not by accident. That ID card, that'll not only get you into the city, it'll also get you food and money and... Fuck is in heaven. Dr. Hewer gave him an all-access... ATM card. Your question. Again, quite futuristic. An airport scanner. I don't think those were around in the 70s. Uh, I don't remember them until at least the 90s. Cards required for entry and exit to the lower. Thank you. You are now. Okay, it's not an airport scanner. It's basically just a ticket stand or a ticket kiosk. You scan your ticket, you go through. Not quite as forward thinking by the writers as I thought. ID cards are required for entry and exit to Sinaloa. So that's literally just plastic explosive that Buck has just placed in the wall that just disappears into the wall. Quite handy. <laughs> All right, so Buck is just walking around the place, placing disappearing plastic explosives everywhere. Fair enough, no one notices. A computer. 
I didn't Computers know Computers are not me. allowed in Sinaloa. Incinerated. So this guy was trying to obviously be a card sharp and get around the casino by counting cards using a computer and he got caught. You don't do that in Sinaloa. What's going to happen to that guy? Huh? Depends what mood Velocity's in. How are you doing? What's going to happen is similar to what happened to the car charts in Casino with Robert De Niro and Joe Pesci. He's going to get his hand smashed with a hammer. A future hammer. <laughs> is this an alien? This blue skinned woman? Not your type. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I think every woman is box type. Especially a blue skinned woman. Who wouldn't want one of those if you never had one before? I'm sure she has a lovely personality and is worth getting to know too. Then your wait will be over. You're going to make me remember. This is the mind reader dude, isn't it? That's coming. And then you're going to kill me. And no one will ever be able to prove you were here. Don't kill Felina. She's too good looking to be killed, man. And by the way, have you not learned that in these type of shows, you're supposed to put the prisoner in a stupidly overly complicated death trap which takes hours to kill them, so the hero has time to come in and rescue her. Get with the program, man. <laughs> and I do like the space waitress outfit. For some reason, she's wearing a mirror on her head. But the rest of the outfit, I give a thumbs up to. <laughs> and that waitress with the pair of beautiful brown eyes has seen Buck, and she's going to become an informer. I'm telling you. My name is Tangy. Tangy. <laughs> Nice name. Look, keep your eyes above the, the neckline there, man. You're dropping the eyes too much. Oh, uh, Buck's the name, and uh, Buck is looking to play some blackjack. I know she's a beautiful pair of brown eyes, but focus on the eyes. No one ever wins at that awful game. I think Buck is looking to do more than play blackjack. Would you agree, guys? Yeah, I'm sure. How about some company? Oh, this lady is more than a waitress. She's a lady of the night. Because she's just said to Buck, are you sure you want to waste all your money on Blackjack? You could waste it on me instead, guy. Hit me. And again, disco music seems to be the genre that's taken over the casinos in the future as well. It's obvious he's cheating. I demand you do something about it. Is Major Landers trying to get Buck thrown in prison so he can escape and wander around and look for Felena? Something is going on here. And I intend to find out what. What's the game here? I'm still not getting it. Is it the prison thing? One of the men at one of your 10 and 11 tables over there is cheating. To whom should I report it? Me. Ah, oh, so Felosi runs the casino. He's like the Robert De Niro of the future from Casino again. Would you like to drink, Marla? Oh, no thank you. You did a favor for me. This guy in the black biker outfit, isn't he the mind reader guy? That's going to extract from Fellini's brain the secret in the, that she's seen in the digital code? If you don't join me for a drink, I'll then be forced not to allow Marla Landers out of the city. <laughs> so this guy's way of getting a date with Miss Landers is to threaten her with imprisoning her in the city forever. Smooth guy. I've never met anyone quite like you before. Well, that's for sure. <clears throat> I've never met anyone quite like you, Miss Waitress, either. I wish I had when I was younger and single. Not because you're wealthy and you're intelligent, just, just because you're free. She's sex trafficked, it sounds like. So sex trafficking still exists in the future, it seems like. Terrible, terrible business. If someone were to offer him enough money, I bet he'd let me go. So the hooker with the heart is trying to manipulate Buck into buying her freedom. I think Buck would do it. He's a nice guy. I would do it in that situation. If it's money, I've won. It's house money. I don't care. I really hate to break this up, Tangy, but I've, uh, I've got to see a man about a horse. <laughs> He's not going to do it. Come on, Buck. You don't need the money, man. It's the future. You're leaving? Yes, but I shall return. <laughs> well, you better. At least he's promising to come back for her. I'm hoping he won't forget her. Come on, Buck. Do the right thing, man, here. I've enjoyed this. I really have, but... This is the mind reader guy, but shouldn't he be off mind reading Fellini, not following Buck? Byron, your idea was very convincing, but there's more to you that meets the eye. But is just telling Landers, you have to go with me and do the business, and you ain't got a choice in the matter. This guy is all class, isn't he? This guy ain't too subtle, is he? Just runs around the corner, stops, walks. No one is going to notice me. We can handle this situation. They always go for number two. And there's Buck with his Kung Fu kick again. One kick, you're gone. 
The cake works both ways, it seems. Everything's kung fu in the future. Whatever happened to good old fashioned boxing? Uh, you got your arm stuck in the trash can, mate. You're doomed now. That's it. That's going to make you pass out. 100%. I was trying to attract the attention of a thug like you. You're saying all this was planned? Yep. <laughs> I like it, Buck. He used his brain. Everyone else relies on computers. Open up. What's that? It's a pill. Make you feel good. You know, relaxed, happy, cooperative. You know this, dude. Take one of your own truth pills, which Buck is not going to give you. Oh, come on. I even had Theo put some orange flavoring in it. You'll love it. Come on. Come on. Open up. What I don't understand is how Buck knew there were truth pills and how this guy was a mind reader. Orange. I lied. That's it. Open for the choo-choo train. That's a good boy. <laughs> I love that Buck is treating him like a one-year-old baby. I wouldn't drink that drink, girl. It's probably Rohypnol. We've already seen Rohypnol used in episode one, so it wouldn't surprise me that it's quite common in the future. I resent the way that you've assumed that I agree to all of this. So he's trying to play the power game. Because I'm such a powerful guy, I make decisions for everyone, therefore I'm making the decision that you sleep with me, Major Landers, whether you like it or not. Where are they holding Felina Redding? Felina, Felina. <laughs> the woman who was kidnapped from New Chicago? This guy's off his trolley. Buck is... Obviously eat him up or something. Elevator F, bottom level, through the door at the end. Oh. Just like that. He's high as a kite, he doesn't care. Veloci, Veloci, his, his key opens everything in the city. <laughs> so he's going to tell Landers to do the business with Veloci to get the key? Is Buck going to use Landers here? Well, you have business to do. I certainly wouldn't keep you. Although she is quite uncomfortable, you can see her clenched hands and she's not even holding his shoulders. She's just clenched and I wouldn't blame her, this guy is rapey as hell. Oh, my mistake, this is the mind reader guy, not the other guy, he was just security. May I remind you the chemicals I use tend to traumatize brain tissue? She's not waking up again. I oh, don't ruin Fellini. She's a good looking young girl, you know, just... Ask her nicely, maybe she'll give you the info. You don't have to brain damage her. Sorry to have interrupted you. What the hell is up with the face of the guy standing behind him? Marlo, open up, it's me, Buck. Where have you been? Buck doesn't want to blend in anymore. He's changed back to his normal uniform. Well, couldn't you get anything out of that man that was following you? Oh yeah, I know exactly where they're keeping Felina. Well, that's good news. Marla, sleep with Velosi, because we need that key card. Buck, who else has a key? A couple of Velosi's goons. And Velosi? Naturally. And guess what, Marla? You can get one of those keys by doing something you don't want to do. In approximately two minutes, we may very well have ourselves that key. Clever, Buck. Make Marla volunteer. I liked it. Marla. You'll have to wait just a minute. If anyone knows this guy's name in real life, please let me know in the comments. As I said, I recognize him from a lot of shows in the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. He was like one of those characters you see pop up over and over again. Actors, sorry, not characters. I'm sorry to spoil your plans this evening, Mr. Velosi. Yes, I am disappointed. Excuse me, Marla. Did you slip into something less comfortable? Kill her. Please don't move. So that's why he brought the security guy. He had a iffy feeling about Marla. You both will die before you leave the city. But Buck is there to save the day. If I were you, I'd worry more about how you're going to get out of here, Mr. Velosi. <laughs> All right, I don't get that. They shot the lock off, but the door still worked. Okay, maybe they had to shoot both locks. I don't know. Next time I'm in town. You won't get away with it, Buck. Maybe you'll feel better after a nap. Oh, come on, Buck. Help the sex traffic woman. That's the decent thing to do, man. I'm not going to... Be needing this, so here, here. Oh, uh, Marla, Tangi, Tangi, Marla. <laughs> good for the introduction spoke. And at least he helped her, which is good. Marla ain't too impressed that Buck is hanging around with hookers, but there you go. You have to do what you have to do when you're in Sinaloa, which is the center of moral depravity in space. Soon, it'll all be over, my dear. I imagine that the worst thing for a person in your position is the way. No, the worst thing for a person in my position is looking at your hair, man, because I can't make up my mind if it's a wig or a comb over. My work calls for strict objectivity. I'm saying wig. What do you think, guys? Let me know in the comments. Just hurry and get on with it. 
I'm ready. I suggest you start recording. What is up with that dude's face? Why is half it like melted? Very soon you shall find yourself afloat in a sea of color and sounds. He's giving her LSD, it sounds like. But to the rescue, and even the girl, though she's tied up, did the kick. At last, unboxing, not just kung fu fighting. Your ID card ready at the entry portal. Well, Fellini isn't gonna have an ID card, is she? But we've got the plastic explosive that Buck planted earlier on, so he's gonna set it off with his detonator, I presume, so that they can distract the guards and get out. Let's go. Cut them off. And there we go. Plastic explosive set off, and all it does is release steam. No damage to anyone. But the guards seemingly are confused by steam. Alright, let's go. We got 10 seconds. Even the little grenade is just like a smoke grenade. Go on! They're heading for the launching bay! Go on, Felina! You deck that guard, girl! So we've seen Felina and Buck Rogers get out, but what about the hooker with the heart and Major Landers? How are you doing, Candy? I am just fine, Buck. Okay, here they are. Is Tanji going to hook up with Buck now and stay in his gaff back on Earth? Well, it looks like the fat's not out of the fire yet. Which means in English... We've got company. So are these the new hatchet fighters? Or is, was Velocity working with the Draconians? Or are these just Velocity's own fighters? They're the new hatchet fighters. Switch the manual for firing. Switch me over to navigational, you take the gun. There's no time! As I said, Buck is going to be an ace manual fighter, even though he wasn't in the simulator. Four ships, no problem to our hero, Buck. One down. That's two down and two to go. Oh, two down, sorry. Why did you learn to fly? Who says I ever did? Well, at least the characters pointed out because Fellini just said to Buck, where'd you learn to fly? And he said, who says I ever did? Which is exactly the question I was asking. He's just a natural. It's innate in his DNA. Oh no, that was the fort. They're all gone. They're all dead. Here's the key to the computer vault at my office. Here is the inventory of everything stored therein. Why is he giving up his entire life for this girl? She has to be his daughter. But I know you. Twenty years ago, when your mother and I decided it was best I leave for your sake. Daughter, I knew it. I knew it. She just didn't know that he was her dad. And when you were old enough to go to work, I couldn't resist seeing that a job was offered to you in my company. So he didn't want to be her dad because it was a weak spot for his enemies to get at him so he hid the fact he had a child, stayed out of her life but always paid money to look after her and give her a job when she was old enough. I get it. Ah yes. Complete technical schematics for the hatchet fighters. So all the data is stored on tape in the future. But at least they've got the answer to sorting out the hatchet fighter problem now. Hi, Buck. How did it go? Rough. Very rough. Oh. Yeah, he picked up a girl, a hooker with a heart, Wilma, called Tanji. Uh, from Tanji. I talked to her briefly before she was escorted over to your <clears throat> apartment. So Tanji is living in his apartment. Hey, folks, welcome back. And that's the end of episode three of Buck Rogers, entitled Vegas in Space. I really actually enjoyed that episode. The fact that Vegas in space as a concept is great. The fact that they called it Sinaloa and it was the center of moral depravity in space was great. We met the hooker with the heart with a pair of beautiful brown eyes. We seen Major Landers and Velocity being a tribute to Vincent Price from House of the Red Death or something like that. And yeah, it was look a simple enough story. I'm not going to say it was over elaborate or anything. It wasn't. And the acting was the usual hammy stuff. But I really enjoyed it. Look, it is what it is. It's cheesy fun. And, you know, I'm all up for it. So I'm happy to continue watching Buck Rogers. That's really all I have to say about this episode. It's not too complicated, as you know, from watching the video. But I hope you enjoyed it. And please join me next time for episode four. In the meantime, please consider leaving a like, a comment or subscribe or follow. It really helps out the channel. And you can find me on YouTube, Odyssey and Rumble. So use whatever platform you feel more comfortable with. Until then, take care of yourselves. Peace out and talk to you soon. Bye for now.